the wonder of the world, the beauty and the power, the shapes of things, their colors, lights and shades. These I saw. Look ye also while life lasts. Barbel are wonderful creatures, muscle-bound bars of gold that provide anglers with the most desirable of challenges. And if we're lucky enough to catch one, these powerful fish need our utmost care and respect. Barbel are lovers of fast-flowing, well-oxygenated rivers, and the places they live need our protection, for without water, and plenty of it, Barbel won't be able to find enough food in the gravel to survive, let alone breed successfully. And because Barbel are strong and battle hard when hooked, they require the greatest care when handling them on the bank and returning them to the river. This is the Hampshire Avon, once famous as a salmon and roach fishing river, but now treasured for its healthy stocks of barbel and chub. The strong flowing chalk stream water becomes crystal clear in the summer and allows peat redding to locate the shoals. This swim is home to plenty of chub and minnows along with several barbel to over 10 pounds, but as most anglers know, catching them usually requires careful preparation. So Pete has been baiting the swim up with hemp and casters for more than an hour, and with patience, he's winning their confidence. But Pete thinks that one more dose of baiting and waiting before casting in a baited hook will ensure success. fishing is to be successful, and more importantly, safe for the fish, then preparation is essential. Pete has already laid out his unhooking mat, waistling and scales on the bank, even if this might be tempting fate. Sometimes you can feed them like this and then nothing happens till mid-afternoon and then the barb will switch on. Right here. A sort of, whoo, Oh, scared. that's a big dream. It looks as though these greedy fish will be easy to catch. Pete's trying to be selective and catch a barbel, so a deal of cunning is required to avoid the bait-robbing chub. Right. This is how we put the casters onto the hook so that the small fish can't nibble them off. Super glue, super glue them. First of all, we stick two together with super glue. And then on the hair of the knotless knot, there, we stick that into that little gap. Get number three and super glue him over there. Number four, super glue cunning. him on there. And there we have. There's one super caster. Yeah. And if they're feeling a bit hungry, you can stick another one on just to make a slightly bigger bait. <laughs> and that is a hair rigged super glued caster, which Barb will find irresistible. We hope. Unfortunately, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Chub find it irresistible too.
This looks as if it'll be too easy. But Pete ensures the fish aren't in the swim when his baited hook is cast by plopping one final bait dropper on their heads. It's the, it's the long tail that makes it tricky. And the wind. I'm being fairly incompetent. There you go. I think so. It's not one of the big ones though. No. But it'll do. Doesn't go too far downstream because even when snagged in weed, by using balanced tackle, Pete is able to make the fight as short as possible so the fish conserves some of its energy. He's off. He's off, is he? He's off the weed. Yeah. He's not one of the big ones, but he's a feisty fish. Beautiful. Resting in the net. Exertions. Yeah. It's best to let them rest for a, a minute or so. More important with the bigger fish. A big, deep landing net allows the fish to recover quickly. Just wet the unhooking mat. Take him out and take the hook out. It's essential to always carry barbel in a net or sling, never standing up with a fish in your hands in case it falls and injures itself. I'll give him another rest before we weigh him. The secret of good handling is to keep them wet, holding them out of the water for as little time as possible. Beautiful fish. Isn't it? Lovely, lovely, fat, healthy looking fish, isn't it? Clean as a whistle. We'll rest him there for a while. Will we weigh him? Letting Barbel get their breath back while preparing weighing and camera equipment is essential. Zero the scales, we don't want any cheating. No, we zero the scales in preparation. There we go. Now we're ready for the fish 
to go in. Right, it should have rested and got its wind back by now. Pays to rest them and wet them as much as possible. Just make sure that they're well recovered before you do anything. That's a nice fat fish, isn't it? Pays to cover their eyes from the sunlight as well. Whether it uh, matters or not, I don't know. Let's see. There we go. Six pounds, six ounces. Lovely fish. A fat, pristine Avon barbel. Youngster too, by the looks of it. Yeah, it's a nice young fish. Clean as a whistle. And never carry a fish. You always move them around in the landing net. So we transfer him back into the landing net, keeping his fins nice and flat. And rest him again. Rest him in the water again. Nice long landing net pole's handy as well. You need the longest one you can manage. Can't be too long. And leave him to breathe for a little while. The rules for release are to ensure the fish has fully recovered. But even some, some small fish can take a long time to come round. So keep them in a the net for as long as possible. So they're really struggling to escape, really strong. You've got to just leave it to breathe for a while. Not ready yet, is he? He's not kicking. He's too full of casters, he's trying to <laughs> digest his meal. He is, yeah. Yeah, he's coming round now. Getting stronger. The whole point is to let them go when they're kicking. This crucial moment is only over when the fish shows clear evidence of its need to escape our clutches and swim free back into its watery world to fight another day. Barbel Society makes every effort to protect Barbel and Barbel rivers and to ensure that there are healthy populations to swim wild and free. So if you are keen on their future success, please join us in our battle for the Barbel's survival.